everyone, it's Okeme. You're welcome to today's episode of Pages Highlights. So in today's episode, I'll be sharing with you highlights from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. It can be viewed as a historical book, but yet it's very present in its application. So briefly, the book of Ephesians is contained in the New Testament of the Bible. The Bible. So Ephesians contains letters written by Apostle Paul around 60 to 62 AD while he was in prison. These letters were to be circulated among the churches in the city of Ephesus. The purpose of the book of Ephesians, due to the language and content of the letter, it is believed that the Ephesian letter was written as a document to explain the development and practical application of a believer's faith in Christ. Ephesians contains six chapters, and in today's episode, I'll be sharing highlights from chapter one. So chapter one gives a detailed explanation of what a believer in Christ has and why he or she has it. Paul explores the story of the gospel here and how through Jesus Christ believers have been made holy. It talks about how every believer in Christ Jesus have been lavished with every spiritual blessing as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father, the father of our Lord Jesus. Just further to explain that by being joined with Christ, we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood. And what this means is that our sins are totally cancelled and written off when we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. Paul enlightens the believers of the abundant grace available to the believers and that this grace is actually capable of releasing within the believer all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. Paul also explores how the gospel story should affect how we live in every area of our life. So chapter one begins with Paul's greeting and emphasizes that he is actually an apostle by the will of God. He then proclaimed in summary what has been given to the efficient Christians through Christ. So in Christ Jesus is a major descriptive phrase which was actually used in chapter one and it implies a vital union with Christ. And just as um, the life of uh, roots is found in the soil, um, believers' true life can be found when they are united with Christ. Major highlights in Ephesians are as follows. Uh, firstly, um, we are accepted into the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. Um, it's not like we actually did anything to have merited this. It's just basically because of the grace of God. And because God loved, loves us, we are his beloved and he had already planned this before time. All those who are in Christ partake of his being chosen by the Father. Like before the foundation of the world, God had already ch chosen Christ. So it makes sense to therefore see that all those who are in Christ have also been chosen by the Father God. And so Paul goes ahead to explain in his letter to the Ephesians, um, which also applies to us as the children of God, that's just like if you look through a red glass, what you would be seeing would be red. If you look through a green glass, what you'd be seeing would be green. So basically, um, so in a similar way, God sees us through Christ and everything in our lives become covered with the blood of Jesus. We are holy and without blame before him because of his love expressed through his son. Another highlight from Ephesians chapter 1 is in verse 6, where Paul explained in his letter, having predestined us into the adoption of the children by Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Our salvation actually brings pleasure to God when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. It gives God pleasure because this is his plan. God doesn't want anyone to perish. It's not his will that anyone would perish. So when we come into the salvation experience, we give it gives God pleasure, like so much pleasure. 
and um he saved us because he loves us it was his good pleasure like it was out of the pleasure of his will to save us we are so we are wanted we are accepted by the father we are wanted we are actually accepted by the father it's just like um a couple going to an orphanage to adopt a child it's because they want the child and then when they accept the child when when they actually fulfill all the documentation in adopting the child they give the child their name okay they give the child their name the child becomes their own like their own they become the parents of the child and they are not adopting the child out of pity no it gives them pleasure to actually have this child in their home so it's more like it gives god pleasure to have us in his kingdom in his family he gives us his name he gives us it gives us his authority he gives us so there's so much that um the package of salvation actually comes with and it gives god so much pleasure so that's one of the beautiful highlights i got from ephesians 1 5 and um Paul said in his letter in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace so yeah paul was saying here that it is through the riches of god's grace that we have received forgiveness for our sins okay there's nothing we can actually do to obtain forgiveness from god apart from actually asking god to forgive us genuinely confessing our sins and forsaking them and that's the riches that is inherent in god's grace and because of that grace we receive forgiveness for our sin so there's nothing we can do to obtain forgiveness when we confess our sins and forsake them except to actually humble ourselves and receive forgiveness as a gift through faith in christ like you need to have faith to receive the forgiveness that god has given you like just accept that god has forgiven you and begin to work in the newness of life so it's not until you keep um wallowing in guilt and you just feel like by refusing to accept the forgiveness that god has given you then you make your you're showing god how like how how sad you are and how how bitter you are over your sin no it's not by refusing it's actually by accepting that christ has forgiven you and receiving his forgiveness it's what paul was trying to say is that it's not um it's not rocket science <laughs> i'm permitted to use that word acknowledging your sin accepting that god's grace is available to help you live above that sin so you do not fall into that sin again and then receiving his forgiveness and beginning uh, is that it? Christ. <laughs> receiving his forgiveness and then seeing yourself the way he sees you he sees you holy he sees you pure he sees you without blame he sees you as his own like worthy of the death of his son worthy of the blood of jesus christ another highlight is from verse 12 of chapter 1 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in god and in working all things together so that we bring praise to his glory so for me um what this highlight does for me is that anytime we're actually in doubt about where the lord is leading us to all we have to do is to decide whether it would bring praise to the glory of god so if we are truly seeking to glorify god then we have passed like the first hurdle in deciding the lord's will concerning any situation so more like asking yourself would this bring praise to the glory so, of god? so paul goes ahead to explain the work of the holy spirit to the believers and then in ephesians 1 13 he reminds them that they have been sealed with the holy spirit of promise and what this means is that 
at salvation, which is when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our personal Savior, we have received a brand new spirit. It, it's more like a barrier is formed to keep sin out and to retain purity in our born again spirit. When we sin, it is, and so when we sin, it is at the soulish level and the physical realm. The born again spirit does not sin because it is born of God, born of God. And you can confirm this from 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. So Paul then brings to light that salvation begins with the born again experience, but that it will not be completed until we receive our glorified bodies and assume our positions in eternity with Christ. And I think this is the hope for the child of God, that we have a place we are going to after our life here on earth is done. And so we can look forward to eternity. Life doesn't just end here. Paul actually prayed that they would get a revelation of what has already been given to them through Christ. And that through Christ, we are already blessed with all spiritual blessings. Although it's such a good prayer to pray for yourself. So get right into this prayer and begin to pray it for yourself. If you, if you actually don't know how to pray, it's even a good way to start. Like pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God so that you would know God better. It's a prayer to pray if you desire to know God better and that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. And this is more like that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you may know the riches of God's glory, that you may know what your inheritance in Christ is. And it's, I don't know how to overemphasize this, but really, it's a good prayer for believers to pray. That, so, and so the phrase, the eyes of your understanding, is simply a metaphor which refers to your ability to perceive and perceive with the mind just as we can you know, just like we can't see when our physical eyes are closed we cannot understand when our minds are closed so actually praying this prayer is actually praying that your mind would be open to what god has called you to do would be open to the gospel would be open to the knowledge of jesus christ when our eyes of understanding are enlightened the end result is that wisdom and revelation would flow so paul reminds them of the importance of knowing that everything we have is true christ everything we have is true christ it came through christ through his holiness not us and it remains because of his faithfulness basically this is a reminder to the believer today like there's nothing to be proud over of. you have wisdom it's true christ you have insight and understanding it's true christ like everything we have everything we can ever be everything we will ever be it's true christ it all comes from him it is in him we live it is in him we move it is in him we have our being and so when we are when we actually realize this it'll help it's easier it'll be easier to to actually live a humble life it'll be easier to be humble because you know that there's nothing to be proud of there's nothing to to be boastful of everything you have is true christ everything you can ever be is true christ and you're there through the faithfulness of Christ. Paul actually wants, wanted the Ephesians and the believers alike today to know not only God's power, but the greatness of God's power. God is infinitely greater in every way, much more than our little minds can comprehend. So Paul prayed that the believers and the church may, may be enlightened to the authority that they have by being united with Jesus Christ. And he also goes further to remind them that they were seated with Christ in heavenly places. This applies to us. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, 
but also in that which is to come this is so amazing this power is at work in the believer and it is the same power that raised up jesus christ from the dead he closes this particular prayer by stating that all things have been placed under the feet of jesus christ and that we are members of the body and as members of the body of christ we also have this resurrection power in us with this i've come to the end of the study of chapter one i hope you found it really um interesting and insightful as i did um i'll recommend the book of ephesians to every christian old christians new christians like irrespective of how long you have been a christian and even to intending christians who are like people who are not yet christians but to also know that this package of salvation is also available to them like if you are yet if you're still in confusion or in doubt about if you should become a child of god i hope ephesians would open your eyes to see all that, all that jesus christ has done for you and just know like god is calling you to himself um coming to the knowledge of god would bring so much pleasure to god and it's not so hard you can just say this prayer like lord jesus come into my life forgive my sins accept me as your own i confess my sins i want to be yours i want to be your child accept me as your own thank you jesus for forgiving me and it's that easy it's just with your confession and by believing and by getting into the study of the word to know what god has called you to do so yeah i i really enjoyed studying ephesians and in my next video i'll be sharing highlights from chapter two i'll also leave in the description some of the resources that were helpful um in addition to the bible while i studied ephesians and um if you like and you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs up and i'd also like to know your thoughts like if you studied ephesians what were your most exciting verse like what was if you studied ephesians um what was your most interesting highlight and just share um feel free to comment in the comments and let's know your thoughts let's share our thoughts in the comment section subscribe to my channel i make videos on faith um relationships personal finance and literature i share interesting highlights from pages because i believe that within the pages of great books insights are found and so thank you for staying tuned and thank you for subscribing to my channel. 